uh, it's important to realize that historically, grain was not handled like it was today. It wasn't even bread like it is today. And so, uh, so if you want, I'll walk you through a little bit of, of some of that, some of that historicity uh, surrounding grain. This is amazing. <laughs> but no, we, you know, we just finished our third annual Two Days of Truth Summit. And I'm still on cloud nine. Yep. This is such an amazing event. Each year it has gotten better. We keep improving upon it. And it has this connectivity feel to it, right? We're not just coming to listen to information from right. people. We're bonding, we're connecting, we're feeling like family, right? Lifting each other up, encouraging, supporting. I feel charged. I feel like my oh. battery has just been charged. Oh, oh no, no question. Uh, lots of good memories, lots of good energy. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been just fabulous. Uh, yeah, you know, content is, is part of it, but man, just the fellowship and, and knowing that, you know, you're not alone because it gets lonely out there when you buck the system. That's it right. sure does. And we all need, you know, we need that, that, um, um, whatever, a, you know, uh, a, 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 a for misfits. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite moments was your talk. Mm when you walked us through the history of how grain has become, become so prevalent in our culture and so prized and cherished. And this really strikes a chord with me because there's so many of us that are now grain free, right? That mm -hmm. we had health issues right. and right. we've teased it down. We're having problems with either digesting, absorbing, assimilating the grain into our bodies. And so we've had to remove it. We have a record high number of people with celiac disease, gluten sensitivity, mm -hmm. gluten intolerance. The gluten-free food market sector has exploded, yes. right? Yes. Um, because we're all searching for answers and grain seems to be uh, one of our triggers. Gr right? Grains become kind of like a new poison. That's you know, right. it's, it's, it's like, the, it's like the, ugly, the ugly stepsister or whatever, you know, it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a good thing. Whereas throughout history, I mean, bread i mean even even the the communion table you know uh, in in the judeo-christian ethic uh, bread and wine you know those are the it's, it's the body of christ uh, right 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 and so here we have you know this this almost sacred thing mm -hmm. and it's um it's now anathema for many people yeah it's a poison and in, in fact of all the food triggers for so so-called mm. autoimmune and chronic yeah, diseases yeah, yeah. you know yeah for all the food triggers grain is the number one trigger for, right. for a disease right so so um, you know I think I think uh, as, as we drill down on that uh, it's important to realize that historically grain was not handled like it was today it wasn't even bread like it is today and so uh, so if you want I'll walk you through a little bit of, of some of that some of that historicity uh, surrounding grain I would love it enlighten us grain has always been the holy grail because it was it was hard to produce in order to grow grain, you, you got to get rid of the sod. You know, you got to you got to get rid of the grass somehow, okay, or the trees or whatever. You got to make an open seed bed because grain doesn't just grow naturally. You know, you don't just drive down the road and and see and see a, a, a barley field and assume, oh, oh, okay, I guess barley just wanted to grow there. You know, no, you know, somebody had to do it. Well, historically, that was always done, obviously, with a sharp stick. You know, um, to, stir, to to stir to to. Uh, to till up the, the ground uh, behind an ox or a you know a mule or a horse or something and and then when you got things stirred up enough uh, then you could go you know fling it on the ground plant it kind of drag something over to cover it a little bit and you had to keep the weeds out of it and then to harvest it you took a scythe you know it looks like skithy when you write it but it's s-c-y-t-h-e a scythe you know and you you scythed it down you cut it and then you you took it so you know so this this grain would be you know yay high you cut it and you put it in a in a bundle called a shock and you shock it and the grains now up on top and the reason for that was to, to get the grain dry uh, to actually dry it down to get it off the plant and actually dry it down and then um, and then after it sat there a couple weeks then you could take it to a um, you know a hard floor pound it thresh it that's threshing, pound it, you know, beat it, um, 
and or, or you know with a flail flail it I mean these are all old words you know that, that are in our English lexicon and uh, you know we say flailing away well that's a flail flailing the 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 grain all right and then you winnowed it you threw it up in the, in the air because the flailing um, separated the husk from the from the seed from the actual grain you know kernel uh, you know kind of like you know like taking the um, you know, taking the pecan shell off, and you get the you get the pecan inside that you can eat. You you got to get the shell off, and um, and then, then you throw it up in the air. You know, you had a breeze way, and the, the the wind would you know blow off the the chaff. That was always real light, you know, leaves and little husks and stuff like that. And then the grain would heavy grain would fall to the ground. And at the end of the day, you know, you you, you scoop up this grain. You now what are you going to do with it? How do you keep the rats out of it? The mice out of it? How do you preserve it? in a day before, you know, before sheet metal and, and butler buildings and all this stuff. Well, you know, you, um, you put it in a, you put it in a, in a big clay pot. And, um, and then a lot of military might in ancient civilizations was used to, to guard, you know, nobility's big clay pots. I mean, these things were 12 feet tall, eight feet in diameter, you know, massive big pots to store it in to keep the mice out of it. And then, um, and then, you know, of course, you'd eat it. Well, the, what, what that did, A, it made grain very expensive, very expensive throughout history. Uh, Thomas Jefferson's farm book, for example, even in, you know, 1820, um, uh, his farm book has, has the various um, values of different commodities, beef, chicken, barley, wheat, corn. You know. and, and if you look at those ratios today, um, you know, wheat, Instead of being, you know, five fifty a bushel today, it would be about, you know, fifty dollars a bushel. That fundamentally changes the value of omnivores because omnivores can't just eat grass like cows. You know, the beauty, the, the reason that the foundation of all ancient civilizations, their nutrition, was either herbivores or seafood, was because those were the two things that were nutrient dense that you could eat without tillage. Because tillage was laborious. You know, you're sitting with a stick behind an ox all day, right? And and so, you know, if you if you were able to, you know, scratch out a goodness, you know, a a thousand feet by, you know, thirty feet field, that was a pretty good sized field, right? And so um, the other thing that happened here was that the um, that that during the two week drying period in the shock the sun would come out and dry down in a day, but in the evening the sun would go down and the dew would come up. And and so th then the then the grain would, you know, get a little bit of moisture and it would ferment a little bit. Then the sun would come out, dry it down, and then it would the same thing. And this this happened over and over again. So literally, until completely mechanized harvest and natural gas drying and all that that we do today, until that time no grain was ever eaten on the entire planet without growing through some fermentation. Wow. And, I mean, and stark contrast from what we have today. Sure. Right? How many people actually eat fermented grains right. today? Or right. even think about that. It's right. not even in our normal vocabulary. Right. And that's why, you know, like Weston A. Price Foundation, that's why a lot of the, whatever, you know, the gluten gurus are, are all about, you know, fermented. Mm -hmm. Um, because because this changes the enzymes, it releases, it makes them more digestible. You know, lots of things happen in a, in a gentle fermentation process. And so, in the you know in the development, of course, in 1837, Cyrus McCormick invented the reaper, which was a which was a mechanical knife that got rid of the scythe. Who what a I mean that's the official beginning of the industrial revolution, is 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 the reaper. Then, so, so that, that, that eliminated the scythe, so you could harvest it a lot easier, but you still had to go into shock and all that stuff. And so after it dried, then, you, then eventually they got threshing machines. You know, by the late 1800s, we had threshing machines, and those were great big, you know, uh, things that you, 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 you pushed your shock in, and it would, you know, uh, shake shake, rattle, and roll, you know, and had big fans in it to blow out the chaff, and, uh, and, and you'd end up with grain in a, in a bin. It, it separated the, the grain from everything else, the leaves, the stem, the, all that. And, um, and so you had, you had two, you know, two stages. You had to cut it, 
and then you had to thresh it. You know, those were the two stages. So today's combine is was a was a machine that eventually combined the cutting and the threshing. That's why it's called a combine. And the combine then eliminated the shock, which eliminated fermentation. Well, the problem is if you direct harvest grain, it's almost always a little too wet to go in a bin, so it'll mold. So along with the combine came mechanical drying, you know, like with natural gas, air, air you know, where you pump hot air through it. And suddenly we eliminated fermented. Other thing that happened was prior to this time, of course, all the, the energy of a farm was draft power, you know, oxen, horse, mules, okay? And, um, and they needed stables, they needed a lot of bedding. And so actually up until, goodness, um, up until probably 1930 or 1940, the straw, which is everything left over from the grain. So you got the little, you know, little kernels of grain up here on top of the barley, oats, wheat, you know, rye. But then you got the rest of the plant, okay? So the straw is all the rest of the plant, okay? That was actually as valuable as the grain for bedding, for cows, and uh, well, for all the draft power, the horses, the mules, all that, that were stable kept because um, we didn't have a way to pump. There were no slurry manure systems. And if you wanted to move manure, you needed to put some, you know, some straw with it to bind it, you know, so you could actually shovel it and, and get it out. And so there was a huge demand for the straw. And farmers knew that that straw grew crops. That was biomass. That was, all right. But once we went to mechanization, eliminate the draft power, and the combine, the whole goal was how can we shorten the plant. We don't, we don't, you know, it takes too long to separate the grain from a great big tall plant. Let's shorten the plant. And so, so over the next, you know, breeding decades, the plants have gotten shorter and shorter and shorter, which means the ratio of the plant to the grain has changed. Where it used to be, you know, the grain was, well, let's just say, uh, you know, 10% of the plant's weight. Today, it's more like 50%. And, and again, the shorter stalk too allowed you to put a bigger head on it because you, know, did, you didn't have to hold side. It wasn't as tall as a skyscraper. You, know, you, yeah. could, you could hold it more. And, and so all these things, uh, I, I know the book, uh, for example, Wheat Belly, if you've ever read the book Wheat Belly, um, he goes into great detail about this shortening and the ratio of, of the plant to, to the leaves. leaves. And yeah, because the thought is that it changed the gluten content. Yes. In in that grain, right? In the part that we eat. Right. Which right. It, it it increased the content of the gluten, which they're theorizing is maybe one of the reasons why we're getting triggered by it more because yes. of the amount of grain that we eat in the standard American diet. Right. It's well, everywhere. Yeah. And and, 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 and the other thing that all that all this quote what quote unquote grain efficiency did it lowered the cost of grain. So the first time in human history, grain was cheap. That has never happened in human history before where grain is cheap. Well, now suddenly everybody could eat it. You know, bread wasn't a special communion. Bread wasn't a special thing. Um, and, and, and our, you, you probably know this way more than I, I don't know, but the, the, um, the amount of grain consumed in crackers and, 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 and bread, exponentially went up from like 19 whatever 70 yes. through 2000 that 30 year period and of course that's also the period 1979 when the uh, our dear friends at the um, uh, USDA gave us the food pyramid yes. for the first time and put cereals on the foundational bottom yes. so everybody's okay let's you know it's cheap it's carbohydrate you know it's accessible let's eat this and so the combination of no fer no fermentation a change in the in the ratio of the plant to the to the production, and simply the the exponential increase in the volume of intake. You, you get those three. Each one of them is a strike. You yeah. put them all together, and and you've got something that's as you know historically, you know the holy grail of civilization was 
grain production. I mean, that that was when we could actually settle down and and you know and build cities and and all that. Um, the the here the foundation of civilization has now become I don't know a poison a, a you know a, a suspect a suspect uh, partner.